The Infragistics Excel engine allows developers to create and instantiate and save Microsoft Excel files. So one of the most important things that I could tell you about the Infragistics Excel library is that it has absolutely no dependencies on Microsoft Excel. So in other words, the Excel objects that you create with the Excel library are done so from scratch. So the code library is built using managed C sharp code. So in this video I'm going to basically show you how to use the library directly. So the class library consists of objects and APIs that allow you to write code to create, instantiate, and use and save Excel files along with the rich API that allows you to access the cells, columns, rows, as well as take advantage of other Excel features such as merging cells, adding formulas that evaluate, as well as important features that you might expect within an Excel file. We also have components that are designed to walk through the various grids offered on our different platforms. The components are called the Excel exporters and what they do is they walk through the grids and dump the grid contents into the Excel file for you while firing many events that you can handle to further customize the exporting process. So in this video I'll just show you how to create an Excel workbook object and do some things with it and then save it into the response stream. So what I did here is I have a simple web application and I'll show you you need to have the infragistics.webui.excel reference in order for this to work and the other thing that you have to have is reference to the infragistics.excel namespace. So you start off by creating a workbook object this way that's how you get started and then the next thing I'll do is I can just set some properties on the workbook such as the author and the company name and so forth say the author equals Tom and then we can set some other properties as well just to give you an idea how you can customize this so that when people right click on the file that you generate for them, they'll get this information in the properties. Okay, the next important step that we have to take is to add worksheets to the workbook. Otherwise, you won't be able to access any rows or cells or anything of that nature. And then usually create worksheets by calling the add method off of the worksheets collection of a workbook. And then you could also access the worksheets within the worksheet collection by index. However, I'm going to just hold on to the reference that I have here. By the way, you also have to give it a name so that way the worksheet will show up as an actual tab in the bottom of the Excel user interface with the string main. And then the way we access cells on the worksheet is by row and cell index, and this is how you do it. So if I wanted to access the very first row, you use the zero based index, and the first cell in the first row same thing. And then you have all these other properties that you can access. For example, we have the cell format, which allows you to specify styling, such as font, back color, for color, and various other style-based property settings. And we can set a formula. That's how you would set the formula. And the value is what we're going to use in this case. I'll do a few things similar to this just to show you how to access this. So we're just setting a couple of values here. And let's also have a little fun by setting the formatting too, just to see what that does for us. So the self format has several things. So we could choose a fill pattern 
which is an enumeration, and that's usually something such as diagonal stripe or horizontal stripe. Let's choose a horizontal stripe. Make it nice and interesting looking. We'll set a different one for this cell as well. Let's set the fill background color. Let's set this to choose that. And so the idea is that you'll have some kind of data that you may want to iterate through and dump it into an Excel file. And this is when you use a loop construct to iterate through your objects and populate the various cells, which you would then access the rows and cells to your iterator variables. That's just one way of doing this. And finally, we're going to set the response content type and header accordingly. And then we're going to take the workbook and call it save method and pass in the web forms response output stream so that that way the end user will get prompted for a download and then end the response so we run the application and all of this action is taking place in the buttons click event handler so we get prompted for a download so I'm going to just open it And here we have our Excel file with the several values that we've written. So here we have the horizontal stripe style, which and it's hard to read the text, but just to show you that it's there, we have the blue background color, and we just have these other cells as well. There's a lot of things that you can do with our Excel API, so make sure you also check out help.infogistics.com, select the appropriate products, and then within the documentation, you navigate to the Infogistics Excel library and check out the further things that you can do with this. So thanks for watching. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.